Keegan, how secure do you feel in the next several years with your job? You know, automation and artificial intelligence are coming and, and you do a lot of work in, in boilers, refineries. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to be replaced by a machine? I don't think I am. I'm not really worried that much because actually this year, 2023, the U.S. is short 300,000 welders. And what's that? what that means is, yes, say, you know, in fab shops, they do have robots that you can clamp on and it makes the weld, but they're going to need someone to program that weld bot, robot. Now, in my case, I do specialty work in boilers and heaters and refineries, and a robot's not gonna be able to walk up to a heater, know what's wrong with it, cut and replace those tubes, mm -hmm. and re-weld those in those tight spots. Now, I have seen where they make little tiny robotic tube welders that you can place in certain places. Some orbital welding or something? Yeah, orbital welding. I haven't dug much into it, but I haven't seen it, and I think that's in really specific circumstances where you have a nice open area with nice evenly spaced tubes a lot of the times that's not going to happen you're going to have really tough welds and really tough situations and there's just no way right now that a, a robot can walk in there and make those welds you know and i would agree with you on the, the other end of the spectrum um, you know working for myself there was a lot of one-offs so it was a, a piping system that that somebody needed quick and, and maybe they just sketched it out on some graph paper right um, there was no designer there was no engineer there was and so it's going to be hard for a factory to produce that one off right um, again if you're making a thousand things yeah it's easy to, to sort of automate that right uh, but if you got a welder who wants a, a a custom truck bed or you got somebody that, that is into motocross and they need a, a custom length of a frame mm -hmm. there's a lot of welding out there that can never be replaced by automation because right. there's so much need uh, everybody wants to be unique everybody wants to custom jobs right and also going along with what you're saying fabricating like you know fences handrails for homes yeah. you know interior design there's a whole big spectrum of welding that people aren't looking at whenever people think of automation and welding it's really factory jobs or shop jobs where they shove a piece of pipe in they put another pipe they use a robot and they send it along like so i think some um pipelines that they put in the ocean they have barges and they got machines that do it and they slide it in mm -hmm. and I, but i think they still have people do that as well um but yeah it's gonna take a lot and i don't even know if it'll happen for some situations you know what i mean i agree with you so i mean you know if anybody's listening and they're worried about getting into a career that that automation is going to take over mm -hmm. i don't think this is it i think this is a career that's going to be hand-driven, work with your hands for a long period of time. And the big thing is the Kentucky Welding Institute isn't teaching their students to be factory welders. They're teaching them to be out of position, traveling welders where they go, where the hard work is, and learning how to make hard welds out of position. You know, they're not teaching you how to just be, you know, the same spot all day long type of welder. Yes, you can do that if you want to, but KWI is crafting their students to be well-rounded and be able to do any type of job. I think we have a couple students that have programmed some robots right. to weld. So, you know, it's just being able to be diversified and versatile. So if you want to come to a school that's going to make you a versatile welder, that's going to give you hands-on skills and a demanding career that we see continuing for a long time in industry, check out KWI and the link below.